at the outset, I was really expecting this, I wouldn't say basic, but sort of generic story. Of, but instead, we got the story of someone who really has devoted his life to teaching and has given students this amazing motivation to continue in school or in, or in athletics and all this amazing, amazing work. My name is Steve Blanchfield. I have been an educator for about 50 years after graduating UConn. Um, taught high school for five years, and uh, not last summer, the summer before, uh, Mr. Dan Zatoun, the principal here, asked me to come back a couple of days a week, which has kind of evolved into being here every day, which has worked out really, really great. My involvement at Hall started um, individually in the late 80s as a football coach here, and I'm still in that role. And it's been great because I've met so many great kids. I always knew the athletes, and now I'm getting to meet all the kids at Hall. And they're just great kids, very talented here. Great kids, great school. When I was a young kid, my mother every week on Friday afternoon was kick us up at school and she'd bring us to church to say a couple of prayers. She would then would bring us to the library to pick up a couple of books we had to read during the, the week. I was in first grade and I could remember the day like it was yesterday. I looked out the window and I saw the Hall High football team practicing. And I can still see this. I looked out the window and I said to my mother, who are those guys over there anyways? She told me it's the Hall High football team. I said, can I go over and watch? I walked out of the library across the street over to practice. It was a small little area. If you went to practice, you were in practice. It's not like the area we have here today. It was small. So I'm a first grader, I go there. They're practicing. All of a sudden they blow the whistle and the man who's in charge, who is Frank Robinson, he comes up to me, puts his arm around me, says, hi, son, my name's Coach Frank Robinson. I'm the head coach here. What's your name? I said, my name's Steve Blanchfield. He says, Steve, great to have you here. Love to have you here. Make yourself at home, love to have you. I haven't left. I've been here 66 years later, I'm still here. And that one act of kindness has stayed with me all these years. So I'm trying to give back the way they gave to me. So I'm uh, the Hall alum. I've been a coach here for 24 seasons as a head coach, 26 total. I also um, had uh, a great experience where that my father was part of uh, Hall High School as well at the same time. So a uh, very unique experience for me having uh, uh, father who was a coach and now I'm, I'm a coach as well. So really, really cool tradition going on. My father was a coach here for 31 years. Um, he started the wrestling program here. He's someone who, when he was a coach as an active coach, he had the highest winning percentage in the state of Connecticut. He used to run a summer camp that people have forgotten about for the mentally challenged kids in West Hartford. Nothing was being done to them and Frank decided to run a program for them. It was a different world back then, nothing was done. Somehow, my sister was his helper. And Barbara said that she learned more about education from Frank Robinson, the father, the senior, than all her classes put together. He had just a really special place in his heart for children with special needs. Oftentimes, when I had the children or the students at lunch, he would come down, he would uh, sit at the table with us. He gets some of his football players sitting at the table with us. And then not only did he do that, but he also insisted that some of the uh, students at Hall High School also join us for lunch. As he taught me how to, we, how to treat people, how to, how to respect children, how to um, be professional, um, all, the, all the ins and outs that you don't learn in a, in a college, he really showed by modeling how we treat, respect um, others. What motivated me to start coaching Hall was the fact that I grew up in West Hartford. And I came to find out that my dad um, was a star athlete here, which I found out a lot more after his death than I knew before, because he just didn't talk about it much. He was really a superstar here. And I just built on that when I was a kid. I, you know, he brought me to basketball games, football games, and it just got me interested in athletics. My father's association with Hall, first of all, is he's the only person I ever knew that actually knew William Hall. 
So right away, we can trans, you know, the, the Blanchfield family goes back to William Hall, the man. And then my dad's father died at a very young age when he was like two years old. So my father really never knew a father. And then he came here as a student. So his role models were William Hall, Eric Norfeld, who he coached, who he played for here, who now the school is named after. And they kind of became his role models. He was offered a scholarship at Kingswood, okay, to go there to um, free of charge to play athletes and be a student there. His mother, who'd be my grandmother, said no because she felt that after his father died, the West Hartford Public School System kind of took care of him and that's where he was going to stay. So he stayed there through his career and graduated in class in 1941. He was senior class president. He was a big rival of Doc Curley, which a lot of people know from Weaver, okay? He was very uh, well known in the community. They were actually rivals in high school. Doc Curley was an African-American. My dad was obviously a, a, a white American from West Hartford. He would actually have Doc Curley over to his house for dinner, and my dad would act, actually go down to North End to have dinner with the Hurleys. And back then, nobody did something like that. And I remember Doc Curley telling me often, he would say, Steve, if everyone in this country was like your father and me, there would be no racial problems in this country. And Doc Curley told me that all the time. After a game, Doc Curley said to me, I have to talk to you about something. So I figure something wrong happened. Why would he want to talk to me after the game? We normally talk before the game. He said to me, Steve, I've been watching your dad. And he said, the kids love him. The, the football team loves him. The cheerleaders love him. The parents love him. But they look at an elderly, kind, gentle man. They have no idea how competitive your dad was. When Hall and Bill Blanchfield came to Weaver, it was going to be a battle. They have no idea. So I told my father that story, and my, I'll never forget my dad's response. Tell Doc, that's how I want to be remembered. As a kind, gentle, older man helping the kids. You can leave out the competitive part. I thought that was remarkable. And then later in life, my, my dad became kind of a, he would not say this, but I will, he was kind of Hall royalty. When he came back to games, they would put a chair right inside the door for him to sit in, a nice kind of a sofa chair. And he never asked for that. He always talked about, make sure the kids have fun, make sure they enjoy it. Yes, make sure they work hard, make sure they do their best, but make sure they have fun and enjoy Hall High School so that down the road, they can look back at their high school years as being fun years. So I try to bring that to school every day here. He died, he died tragically. Yeah, he, um, he went to a Hartford Whaler hockey game. And um, after the game, he was leaving the Hartford Civic Center and a drunk driver went through a red light and hit my father and killed him. Um, he was 72, so he wasn't that young, but he wasn't old either, okay? And the doctor said he was in perfect health. Um, it was a big news story at the time, all right? And after that, um, Hall instituted the William Landfield Award for my father in honor of him. The family didn't do that, Hall did that. And the town of West Hartford named a park after my father also. And they don't name parks after people very often. You have to be pretty special for the town to name a park after my father. When he was tragically killed, um, my mother wanted to wait for two hours, okay, from like, it was gonna go from four to six. So many people went, it went from 3 till 11.30 at night. So think about that, from 4 to 6 to 3 to 11. And my mother, I stood right next to her, didn't talk to anyone other than to say, thank you for coming, thank you for coming, thank you for coming. And people who were there, of course I was inside, not outside, they said as big as it was, you could have multiplied it by two and a half because it was like a two and a half to three hour wait. And most of those people were hog kids. And remember, my father wasn't a teacher here. He wasn't a coach here. His, he had graduated in class of 1941. He was just here to watch the games and support the kids. And all the kids fed off of that. And I can't tell you how much they loved him. Oh, my mother was, she was just a, an elegant, lovely, lovely lady. Um, again, she was the one who brought me to the library that really started this whole thing going. Then my dad would bring me to Sterling Field to see actual call games, and it kind of snowballed from there. After my dad died, she lived 18 more years. 
she never went on another date. And she was, she was physically a very beautiful woman. And she was quiet, but very elegant. She would come to the games and sit right in the middle of the stands and she always came early. And the cheerleaders would go up and talk to her about what makeup she used and what she did for her hair. She never wanted people to know her age. For whatever reason, I always respected that. The day of the Hall Connor football game that year, she turned 90 on the day of the game. But midway through the first quarter, Hall calls timeout, we're out in the field, and I hear the announcer say, if I could have your attention, please. We all know Steve Blanchard, the football coach at Hall. Well, her mother, France, his mother, Frances, is here today, and it's her 90th birthday. And we want to join the Hall band in playing and singing happy birthday to Frances Blanchard to a woman who didn't want anyone to know her age. And they did it three times. That was her last Hall Connor game. She died a year later, before the next year. She made 90. That was, her, that was the, the last. So it was a nice send off by Hall. She was a lovely lady. What brought me back to Hall after being away for so many years? After I left teaching, I didn't leave teaching because I didn't like it. I left teaching because I started a business. I couldn't do both. And it was a very difficult decision. But many, many, many days I questioned whether I did the right thing or not. And life doesn't give you mulligans often. You make a decision and you live with it. So in the back of my mind always was, did I do the right thing? And that's one of the reasons why I coached, because it kept me in high schools, all right? And then when Dan Zatoun, not two summers ago, said, we could really use you a couple of days at Hall, I jumped at the, at the chance to get back in class. My life's funny. I never thought in a million years that I would back in a, be back in a high school classroom. And guess what? I was back, back in a high school classroom. Uh, my name is Mr. Zatoun. I'm the principal at Hall High School. So my experience here at Hall High School has just been phenomenal. Uh, I've been fortunate to be here for 10 years now uh, at Hall and the, the students here are absolutely the core of what makes everything so great. They are uh, passionate about what they wanna do. They're motivated uh, and they're really just amazing. And they're uh, balanced off with just an amazing faculty who really supports the students and, and their success. You know, I was fortunate to meet him during my first year here at Hall High School you know, he was coaching, he was all, you know, working in the basketball games, hockey games, I mean, he was always here. So we always had a chance to just, uh, in between games and stuff, just, you know, chat and just say hello. We got to know each other and just for me to realize just what a what an amazing, wonderful human being he is, uh, let alone just the commitment he makes to Hall High School. We were talking and he had talked about retiring from um, his kind of, the, his career that he'd been doing. And at the time I had asked him, I said, hey, what are you gonna do with all that free time? And he wasn't sure. And I had let him know that there might be a TA uh, opening. And I think we've all benefited from that. You know, I think him included, I think he was enjoyed the experience, but I think the kids have enjoyed uh, getting a chance to see Mr. Blanchfield. He's just such an incredible role model uh, and see him not only just, you know, at the basketball games, hockey games as a coach, uh, but also just in the, the day in and day out, whether it's at the cafeteria or recovery for classes. So it's really just been a great experience and he just really adds to you know, the, the, the already incredible culture that we have here at Hall High School. Um, my name's Emma DeMichael. I'm the captain of the softball team. I'm in Coraliers and Pops and Jazz. Coraliers is so fun. Blanche is always our sub whenever Mr. Bowles is out. He's so supportive. He always wants to hear the music that we're working on. And he's just, he's always so proud when we work on new songs and we sing them for him. My name is Daniel. I'm a junior at Hall High School. I've had Mr. Blanche as a sub in gym classes and history classes multiple times. And whenever he does substitute, he's always very nice with everybody. And like in gym classes, he'll make sure everybody is safe and participating and having a good time. One time he came into school and he was like, oh, you have to watch this video of um, Roxy that I watched on YouTube because Roxy is one of the songs that I sang for Pops and Jazz. And he's like, you just have to like, you have to channel this energy. And he was um, so supportive and encouraging. So that was great. His hellos are, are greeted with a name and, uh, you know, just everything about him is it's super positive. And uh, I think he's made Hall a better place. The piece that really brought it out about bringing him back as a TA, uh, I think goes back to just, you know, him and his core. You know, we talk about just being this wonderful human being. You know, he's always kind, he's always considerate. Uh, he's always thinking about other people. And, and so when we talk about, 
you know, the people that you want to bring into Hall High School, you know, whether it's being a teacher, whether it's being an uh, administrative assistant, whether it's being a TA, whether it's being a custodian. For me, those are things you want to bring in. You want to bring in good people. Um, and, and I don't know if anyone exemplifies that more than Mr. Blanchfield. And so it just seemed to be a natural fit uh, to have a couple more work here at Hall High School. High school sports is really a platform for the rest of their lives. No one, prob probably no one's going to the NFL or the NBA or the tennis tour. Probably no one at all is going to do that. But they're all going to go into the world and have to make a living and be valuable parts of society, raise a family. And so this is a platform for them for the rest of their lives. And that's how I kind of look at everything I do. I think it's a great sport for kids to play. Um, it teaches them hard work, perseverance, um, getting up when you're knocked down, um, uh, sportsmanship, getting along with each other, working well together. You know, and I think when you talk about being a great coach, it, you know, it, it kind of goes back to being just a great person, you know, and being a great role model, what it means, what it means to be, you know, uh, a good student athlete, what it means to be a good teammate, you know, and, and instill all those pieces. And once you do that, once you have that core foundation done, then from there, you can kind of build up on the, the technical aspects of a sport. So whether he's coaching football or he's coaching tennis or, you know, whatever sport he's helping out with that, you know, those technical pieces come after, you know, once you've established kind of those those core fundamentals of being a good human being. Coach Potential, does, he, has, he has like that fatherly figure that uh, makes sure you're always doing the right thing um, and, uh, you know, makes your day better. So he's definitely someone that has propelled many student athletes to being uh, more successful in life. So when he received the Friends of Football Award, we just thought that that was just, I couldn't think of a better candidate. Um, it was good to know that not only just once again, the West Hartford and the Hall community can see the excellence that Mr. Blanchfield brings, but that even outside, you know, that the other schools, other districts, uh, you know, other communities also can see, you know, the, the, the excellence and, and, and really what, what Mr. Blanchfield brings it was an obvious choice and it was a no-brainer. It took me completely by surprise to get that award. The Connecticut Central Connecticut officials um, award that every year to one person. And if you look at the list of the years, it's a who's who of high school football. The Giants have won that. And um, I, I am just so humbled to have won that award. The officials get together and they decide who, who has been a great sport, who's been in, in football a long time, who's been good to the officials, all that. And I, I won it. I am just humbled to have won that award. Thank you for bringing that up. The interesting thing is this whole documentary, quite honestly, has made me reflect back on my life in a very positive way. And you think back to when you're a kid, to what you want to do, and then what you do, and you know, kind of here you are. And I've said this many times, when you, when you start as an educator, um, you want to help kids, you know, that, that cliche, you want to help kids, which is actually true, okay? But now that I've done it for 50 years and I look back on it, and if you had an exit interview and they said, okay, you've done this for 50 years, what did you like? What was the best part? That's easy. It's the friendships I made along the way. That has been the best part of it by far. And I never really thought about that getting into it. But now that I look back on 50 years, the friendships that I've made in, in coaching and teaching have been priceless. I gave up teaching a long time ago to go into business. I never in a million years thought I would be back in a high school and classroom with kids. And one of my biggest concerns was being away from the classroom for so long. How are kids gonna to react to you, what it's like, and are you still gonna fit in after all these years? But that being said, I can't tell you how happy I am to be back here. The kids in this school are such great kids. They keep you young. Every day is fun. Every day is just an actual joy. So I just want to end it up on that. It's been a great experience to be back here. And I often think back to my dad, knowing William Hall, and that the tradition between the Blanchfield family and Hall High School continues. Thank you. It's not a story of just a man who decided to become a substitute teacher and coach, but it's a man who's really devoted his life to helping others and using the experiences from his personal life with his father and his family 
to impact the lives positively for others. I believe Blanche is just a very inspiring individual and um, to, to have his story be told in, in this way, I think, I think it was something a lot of people might have needed to hear. He has this wonderful sense of optimism. He always sees the good in people. 